I've had a week away and it's been really nice and the weather has been really kind to us. It's super hot, so no more of that horrible rain and rubbish that we've been having. So welcome back to the big build and we're laying bricks again. I've got Chris here and he is busy away. I looked away and five minutes later he's already up to seal height, but there you go. Well, that's what you want. So apart from some material issues, we've got everything we need. Now we have had a few issues with the blocks and quite a lot of them were coming in damaged as they were coming out of the wrappers. I'm not sure why that is. Um, it's just another one of those things. But when there's shortages, as soon as you've got breakages, you've got to start thinking, where can we use them and all the rest of it. But we'll get through them. So what have we got? We've got our bricks. We've got our blocks. We've got some concrete blocks. So we've got one end of the building is face brickwork with three windows. On the other part of the building, it's rendered to match the existing and that's got concrete blocks on the outside skin and it's got a thermalite block on the inside skin. Now we're using a 7.2 Newton block. This is a high strength block. And the reason for that is even though they did say we could use a 3.6, which is half the strength effectively, I like to up it a little bit and go for the higher strength blocks because we've got quite a lot of roof loads coming through. We've got steel beams here and there. And even though the engineers are all happy with it, when I've got a skinny little pier, of block, I just think to myself, if you can make that slightly stronger by just upping the blocks, the cost doesn't increase very much. I just think that's a really nice, safe way of going. We tend to engineer everything to just about so in the UK, and I think that's a good thing, especially when you're talking about steel beams. If you've got super heavy steel work and you could use something slightly smaller, slightly lighter, obviously that's a win-win as well. So the guys are running around their inside skin. They're gonna get that up to a certain point. Then they'll start with the face work and come round. Once they get up to sill level on that side and door level on this side behind Ed there, we're gonna put in the cavity closures. So what we're using is, we're using one that comes in pre-made, if you like. So the corners, are all welded, the insulation is all the way through, the aperture size is exactly as we want, and the idea is they'll come up, these will get put on, built in, and they have their own ties which slide in the side. So unlike normally, where you might build your cavity work up and then go around afterwards and put in your insulated cavity closures, this system is far better. It's not a lot more money than buying the loose ones, but they come in already done. And another real advantage, for, for example, this doorway here, this particular cavity closure is a structural cavity closure. Now what that means is, is it will take a fixing. So inside the cavity closure, this section here is super, super solid. And if you're landing a door frame and it was in the middle of the reveal, for example, it will take a fixing. Unlike if you've got a standard cavity closure with a softer insulation, you know it's quite difficult to get a fixing. So that is a really nice innovation. I particularly like that. So there's our cavity closures. You'll see those as they go in. All right, Chris, it's been a while. Hello, mate, how are we doing? Yeah, all right, mate, yeah, you all right? Warm. I know, it is warm, isn't it? And these, these blocks will suck the life out of that muck. You've got to get your finger out, haven't you? <laughs> We've got to really keep going. <laughs> Which is all right, though, isn't it? It's all right. Everything good, though? Yeah. You got everything you need? Yeah, everything's turned up, which is nice. We've had a few jobs recently where stuff doesn't turn up. So what you, nice what's, be, um, what's the biggest issue that you're finding, mate? Cement and concrete blocks. Oh, is it? So that's the main two. It's not our job, it's someone else's job. We've been waiting to go on for a while, and that's been put back about a month or so. What, because of supply? Yeah, just can't get the blocks where he is, so. Yeah. And where's that, far from here or not? So that would be Portsmouth. Portsmouth, so right. not too far, but yeah. And they're, and they're struggling down there. I know, it's really, it's ridiculous, mate. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Currently, if you're watching this and it's um, way down the line, it could be three years' time someone might watch this and they might think, what are they going on about? Can't find materials. We're currently in a position where certain materials are just really hard to get hold of, timber especially. I know you're talking about concrete blocks. Yeah. Cement's been an issue. And they've sort of put it all down to all kinds of things. They're putting it down to COVID. They're putting it down to Brexit. They're putting it down to 
just a supply and demand issue based on the fact that everyone's improving their homes, they're not going on holiday and all the rest of it. And um, it is becoming a little bit funny now, isn't it, you know? Especially if you're halfway through a job and you can't finish it. Anyway, mate, so um, you've only got another bit to go before you're up to Silite. Yeah. And then um, got your wall starters on over there. Yep, yeah, all gone up, which is nice. That's good. good. And you've got your stuff. ties up there. You can pull them off and use them as you go. And you're laughing, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, mate. I'll leave you two to it. So. I'm going to get on. Over there, mate, in the bush. <laughs> So this is the first time I've actually had these pre-made cavity closures on site and I remember thinking about it, you've got to think in advance what you're going to use, what you're going to need. So what I did on this job was I chatted to Chris in the ground when we were doing the footings and we chatted about the bond, about the brickwork, about the window positions, knowing I had a bit of time to get my roof off to get these ordered. So well, the message is I had to, I had to have at least six weeks to get these ordered. Now that might change as you know things get easier to order in the future, but I allowed about six weeks and it worked out really well and I'm so glad I did. What happens normally is we may build a dummy timber frame, so out of say CLS or three by two, we'll make the frame to the window size or the window size plus its gaps and then we'll square the corners up and the brick layers will build them in. But they generally build that in on one skin and then they have to plumb the other one up. And sometimes it's in the way to try and get the reveals dead straight and square and all the rest of it. Whereas with this system, obviously, they're coming in to the sizes I've ordered. They're particularly stiff. And because they're a plastic section, in fact, I've got a section. I'll show you a section. Because they're a plastic section, which is extruded with right angles, it's really nice and straight. It holds its shape. It holds its form. So even where we've just stood those straight in the cavity, we haven't got any bracing on them. I am going to brace one at the moment. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do there, but I'll show you a section of it. Here, I'll bring one over. For our, our door frames, so we've got a bifold set and we've got a single door next to it. This is a structural cavity closure. What that means, it's not taking the load from above, but what it is doing, it's got a solid core. I mentioned that earlier, that we can actually take a fixing. So when you're fixing the frame, if your window frame lands anywhere over this structural cavity closer, it's going to take a screw. And this section here, it's insulating, but it's also super solid as well. And that also stiffens the whole thing up. So it's acting like a former for the windows. It's closing the cavity off. And the best thing of all is that it takes its own ties. So you can actually tie the cavity closer in instead of having to get your brick ties you know, set as close as you can to reveal. We haven't got to worry about that. You can get those in anyway, but you can also use, I shall find a couple over here. Let me just bring one back to you. You can also use their own tie. And I think that's a nice innovation. It's not a skinny, super like loose fit. They slide up and down and they're catching the outside leaf and they're catching the inside leaf. Now I think this innovation is particularly good. Now let's take a look at the cost. So they're fairly inexpensive cavity closers. If you go down to one of the big sheds or one of the big builders merchants, you could probably get a pack of 10 for 80 quid. So eight pounds a length or something like that. But you've got to bring them back, you've got to cut them, you've got to try and fit them. And generally you're doing that after the brickwork's there. If they've bought the insulation in the cavity too far forward, and let's say it's a PIR insulation, 
it's really difficult to trim that back. You see people trying to smash it in by hand and then they're trying to use a galvanized nail or something like that, tacking it through into the edge of a block like this. And guess what happens? It just splits it off. If you're lucky, you'll get a fix in. Other people try and drive a drywall screw into it and it sticks the head out and it doesn't really do a lot. And so it's, it's, this is just for me, this is a super, super way of getting a beautiful detail straight away. There you go. You've got a tie. I mean, look at that. It's absolutely perfect. So I particularly like them. So look out for them, guys. I'll put a link in the description to the supplier where I got mine from. Um, really quite helpful. I haven't had to send drawings. I just sent dimensions to them. So it's no big deal. Just think ahead. And they actually deliver them complete. Um, just a quick note as well, if you do receive some, this one here, I think it got a bit knocked about in transit. So measure them. They've got the sizes that they should be written on. And just as you go to put them in, maybe just check if you need to just retighten some of those little fixings there and get it back to where it should be. So what I'm going to do on these big ones, so the brickies have come up with this reveal. They're plumbing it all up and they're getting that one nice and true. But I've got three more legs here. Now this one is braced off here to that one over there. So I know that that one, if their one's plumb, this is going to be plumb. But what I am going to do is I've just got a section of four by two. Let me get it here. It's on the bench. And what I did, I held this on the outside and I marked that one, obviously the next one, and this one over here. I'm going to just knock out these notches and what I'm going to do is just drop that over the top, effectively in the middle of the cavity. And then that will keep them all parallel. Then what I'll do is I'll plumb one of those legs up and just secure it, just so I know that everything is true. There, the section of block and brickwork in between, and this leg here. So we'll just knock these out on the stools here quickly. I've got a handsaw, I'll get my, um, and then I've got a multi-tool, I can just cut these out here. Right, let's do that. Let me get my, hand saw. Where did I put it? There he is. Mustn't leave these hand saws lying around when there's brick layers on site. Otherwise they become very dull very quick. <laughs> so let's just knock out these notches. So obviously it's just a matter of dropping this over the top just to keep them all parallel that they are. So it's just an idea of dropping it over the top to keep them parallel just there. <laughs> so it's just a matter of dropping this over the top of those legs nice and gently. That'll keep it parallel just like the bottom. The guys can come along and they can just carry on building. They've got to worry about micro plumbing up here and there or more importantly, worrying about me walking around with my level afterwards, which is horrible. So I'll whack this over the top and just try it in. So I marked it off the bottom, so I've not done any measuring. I've just held it in place. There we go. That's it. And we can just hold that all on there. Now that will hold everything where we want it now. I'm just going to plumb up one of the reveals and then put a shim in accordingly to make sure it's plumb and that will lock it off. So if I just plumb up this reveal here, that's pretty nice. How are we doing? Good. Looking good, mate. Thank you. Enjoying yourself? Yeah. Don't mind this heat. A bit too much. 90 it? degrees or something like that. 30, 30 degrees centigrade, centigrade? 
I don't know. A 90 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. I know that everyone in America who watches they always tend to say things like, tell me that in pounds, or something like that. Or, because um, if I say I'm um, 10 and a half stone, they go, what is this stones thing? Which really amuses me. I think it's great. But when they say I'm 200 pounds, I think, blimey, that's expensive. <laughs> that is crazy. All these foreign, foreign, they're not really foreign Americans, are they? They're kind of like us, really. They just have a different accent. Do you know what I mean? Not peculiar or anything, I like your accent. In fact, I've got a guy called Bill Rimmer who lives in California and he often sends me messages and asks me what's going on and all the rest of it. Um, in wine country, I think he is. That sounds lovely, doesn't it? Wine country, I'd be drunk all the time. Anyway, let's have a quick wander around. So yeah, we just, I was just talking about those cavity closures. You like them as well, don't you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Save all time. right, aren't they? Save time. I think they're nice. I think that um, they do save time, but equally, it, it, they're in the way all the time, aren't they? So you've got to sort of be prepared, be a bit more patient. I know that some brickies might think, oh, it's what a pain in the iris that is, but um, yeah. it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah? Definitely. So, another couple of hours and that's it, knocking off for the day. Yep, get yeah? some brickwork up, special height tomorrow. Up to where? Somewhere up here to the day. Get yep. the window sills on so we can get the frames all in these tomorrow. Yep. Um, yeah. More block work in the and then we'll get some staging up and get up to plate height. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, mate. Brilliant. Brilliant, nice one. All right, well, we'll catch you back tomorrow. Part of the brickwork that we've got to do on this job is actually rectifying some of these existing walls. So what they did on the really old section of building, they sort of rationalized the building. They put a concrete slab inside, sort of thing you do with a barn conversion or a period building. And then they went round with an insulated blockwork skin and that also shared some of the roof loads. And then they closed the cavity with basically anything, bits of tile, bricks passed across, and everything was a bit loose and a bit wobbly and they built around the joists. So as we took the joists off, it all just went everywhere. So Andy's just going back through now with a dense concrete block to close off the cavity again. He's getting on with that. Now let's go and have a chat with the brickies who are getting up to the top, uh, or the underside of lintel now. They're doing really well, it's looking really good. We'll go and have a quick chat with them. Classic brickies. Classic. Got the treats on site. Hiding the flashy pigs in And well. shared them with no one. Yeah. Cheers to that, Chris. No worries, mate. Chris, talk me through your setup here, mate. So we've got profiles, dory blocks, T clamps, Dean clamps, top clamps from BT Engineering. Really good stuff. Uh, just makes life a lot easier. Just slide that up, down into there. Gives you your height, it's all marked up there. The other profiles I've scribed on, um, but just instead of having to build a corner here, build a corner here, your first run you in about three bricks. You can put a profile up, run straight in. A lot of brickies using my site these days, but they're great for extensions as well. Nice, lovely bit of kit. Yeah. Just flushing off our joints, because um, we've got quite small bricks on the job. We've decided to go for a raked out joint, just to bring that out. Um, so we flush them over first, get them really nice and packed in there. And then we'll use our chariot, which is around somewhere, just to rake them all out, which I'll show you in a minute. Nice. How long do you leave them before you rake them out? Uh, it depends. I mean, at the moment we've had like 30, 35 degree weather, so you can basically do a few cores and then do it straight after the most. But um, yeah, it all depends on brick works all times. Nice. And if we ever want to get up or down, we can just just creep up on each course, maybe a millimetre on each course, and we can get our 10 mil. That's needed. So we can work both ways. It's never exact, but the gauge of, of brickwork is always the same. So we can just juggle it a little bit within 10 mil. Looking really good, that. Looking good. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? You add some walls, and the footprint looks tiny when you're in the ground, and you add a few walls everything starts looking a bit bigger. And mark my words, it just carries on doing that. You put a roof over the top, it feels a bit bigger. You plaster it, it feels a bit bigger. As soon as you flatten the surfaces off and you paint it, oh my God, it feels even bigger again. Anyway, I've got a little bit of hay fever. I'm just about to do one of my sneezes. And we all know the difference, don't we, between a sneeze, you, can, you, can, you can't stop a sneeze. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? What was the other thing? You can sometimes stop a sneeze. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Oh, that's awful, isn't it? Now, it's looking really good, Chris and Pete. It's looking awesome. I 
get really nervous when you start coming around our brickwork with a big level like that. Well, when I've got a level in my hand, mm. oh, it's just because I'm walking from A to B, I'm not going to be like this, going to check it up. Do you know what? On some sites, so in the recession of the sort of early 90s, my father-in-law, Danny, was a bricklayer. He was on Bentles, which was a big shopping centre in Kingston, and there was such a shortage of work that literally, if, if the clerk of the works came round with his bubble and your perps were five mil out of plum, you was off. They had that many people waiting, literally at the gate, to start laying bricks. That's how it was. Some days they'd say, wages are going to drop a five or a day, expecting people just to leave, but people didn't because they had nothing else to go to. So, yeah, it's not like that nowadays. So anyway, if you can find, if you can find quality labour, keep them, okay? Don't piss them off, be nice to them. If it's hot, don't expect too much. You know, I mean, these guys this week in 90 degrees heat have done absolutely fantastically. And, um, you know, it's, it's good. It's testimony to you there. It's only because Pete's cracking the whip though, isn't it? Exactly, mate. I don't do much work, it's just keep me on the scene tonight. I don't know. Now it's looking really good. I really like these um, cavity uh, closures. I think they, they're, they're a nice addition. Yeah. It's done then, isn't it? It's job done. Normally, I might make a dummy frame out of timber, so I've got to buy the timber, I've got to make the frame, the guys have got to stand it in, and it might only be on the face work, which is where we normally put them. And then if you're trying to line through your reveals on your block work, it sometimes gets in the way. So at least here, it's done. So I'm saving money on not buying that timber. I'm saving labor on not making those frames. And I've got to buy cavity closures anyway. So why don't I go to the trouble of pre-ordering them? They're made by the manufacturer. They're welded at the corner. They're nice and airtight all the way around once they're built in. The insulation can come look beautifully in the cavity, straight the way up to them. There's no, no error there. Quite a lot of the time, the cavity work will go up, the insulation will go in. The brick layer might not even know what size cavity closure is going in, and they all vary on the depth as well here. So this way, it's really nice. The integrity is perfect, and I think that's absolutely brilliant in today's ages of thermal performance, air tightness, and all the things we really need to think about. Anyway, you're doing a real good job there, mate. I'll leave you to it. I'm really pleased. And I'm going to go and get on and do something else. Now that is so much fun. 14 inch or 350 mil disc cutter and it is battery. Can you actually believe that? Can you believe that five years ago if someone had said that to me, you could get a 14 inch battery cutter that even I, and you know how small I am, can wield, I can wield it. It is a touch heavier than its equivalent petrol, but the thing about a cutter like this is you should be using it plum you don't really want to use it on the side. You, don't, you know, you can use them on the side like this. In fact, that feels quite nice. But what I find when I'm cutting, especially these concrete blocks here, so they're dense concrete blocks, I'm just shortening them. That's all I'm doing. And to keep that cut straight, if you imagine holding a bicycle wheel by its axle and spinning it, you've probably done this as a kid, 
and you're trying to turn it and it's sort of gyroscopic effect, it wants to make it go straight up. A little bit like when you're riding a bike, as soon as you've got momentum, you're straight up, aren't you? Very similar to this, you know, it's so well weighted down the center, everything seems to be really well balanced that once you're running up at full speed, just gotta relax because like a pendulum, it's gonna swing dead straight and it's gonna cut everything nice and square. It takes a little bit of practice and confidence, but yeah, I was, uh, when I first picked this up, I thought, blimey, I'm gonna be like that Arnold Schwarzenegger man by the time I finish using this, but actually, the benefit of not having all those fumes and the heat from the exhaust of my petrol one, that's a winner. On with the lintels then, Chris. On with the lintels, mate. On with some upwards. Nice. Put a bit of muck on so it sticks. as easy as that. As easy as that mate, yeah. Do you want it? Spot on. It's close enough. Brookie's favourite, close enough. <laughs> it's in the lines. <laughs> so you've got another course to go on then? Yeah, number three, so we've got soldiers on top of these windows, which is just bricks laid, 90 degree round. Um, three fourths in between. A little block to go on the inside, plate height. Yeah, and that's this bit done. And then we're there, and then you're out of here. Gone. <laughs> nice one, mate. All right, Pete, mate. All right, Dad. Getting them soldiers in now, are you? Soldiers are going in. Lovely stuff. Finished nice off that back. window detail nicely, done it? Yeah, look nice on it once you get the your wood effect on top. Do you like putting soldiers in? No, I'm gonna put in. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> As you see, you have to use a bolt level. Yep. You get each one plumb when you put them in. So they don't look. Like Chris is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get the first in nice and plumb, you're right then, aren't you? Sailing. Yeah, you, you have to make sure, because these bricks, these bricks are quite rough, you see, so you just have to make, keep an eye on them. Yeah, that's the experience, isn't it? It's just blagging it, that. <laughs> anyway, mate, it looks lovely. I'll let you crack on. All right, mate. Here's the apprentice putting them in. Yeah, I'm, I'm just watching Pete really, just making sure he's doing it. No, it's all lovely mate, it's beautiful stuff. What's the technique for getting them on then? Talk me through it. Um, so you want a nice bed, you have to have a look at the bed, just enough to squish down. If you go too much, bed on there, so if you add too much, it's just going to squish against the back, push the bottom of your soldier out. Soldier. Um, too little and they'll sink below the line. Nice purple there, they're not the fullest in the world, but just want to get them nice and uh, upright. Get them in there. Every brick or two, just have a measure. So you want your brick gauge, so it's supposed to be 450, but because you've got an extra purple on the end, which is the bit more that goes down the brick, you want an extra 10 mil, so that is 460. Just so that goes into the last one, it's going forward. Again, we've got, this distance might not work, brick work, so you have to sort of think, are you going to close up the joints or open them up? Um, these bricks are a little bit smaller, so we can afford we were to look at that, we could squeeze them a bit more than we could open them up so you wouldn't notice the joint as much. So, yeah, it's just all sort of preparation and checking and making sure you're doing it the way you want it. Beautiful.
Like a glove, hey Pete? Nearly there, there. Three fingers glove. <laughs> Camera dad. You are mate, you are indeed. You've got anything insightful to say? Fact of the day. Fact of the day. Never wear sandals in the snow. <laughs> Is this what they call the big build, Ed? You are on the big build, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, privilege, isn't it? You're going to go and watch us. we get extra. Your family going to be gathered around in Liverpool watching this. No, I've got no family. They're all in jail. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done there? That was Chris. <laughs> what am I getting blamed for around there? <laughs> well, the guys have done all right. Brickworks up as far as they can go. We've got a little bit more to go over the top of the steel that we've just landed. And we won't actually do that bit of brickwork over the front until we've got a joist in because it's literally a course of blocks over the steel plate that's welded to the steel. And from my experience, no matter how well you lay that through there, while you're putting joists on, someone might knock it with your knee and all the rest of it. So we'll get the joists on first. A bit like you're building a gable, put the timber work up and build to it. So everything's done. I was really pleased with uh, the brick. It's quite a nice brick. It's really um, rustic. It suits this environment, you know, countryside. So we've also got a dense concrete block face, which is going to be rendered the same as the existing elevation there. So Andy's just inside. He's blocking some windows up that are all, all now obviously not needed. He's also gone round and done all of the levelling up around the top, so where we had these really old walls and all the cavities were closed with various different bricks and it was, the joists were built in between, it was the right state. But we've had all that off, we've got it dead flat, dead level now, ready for our joists, which are coming anytime soon. So I can't wait to get those on site and get those on. These pre-welded, pre-made cavity closures have been a fantastic success. I've really like these, it's the first time we've used them. Normally we build our cavity brickwork and then we go around afterwards with a cavity closure. Nothing wrong with that, but this is brilliant because everyone is tied as well. So we've got two channels that run down the back and they're tied here, so you can't pull it out. It can't come out, it's absolutely perfect. And you'll see from some of the earlier shots in this video where the insulation meets it perfectly. So you've got your cavity, or cavalock standing up, then you've got your ties, you've got your insulation fitting it, so it's absolutely perfect. There's no margin for error there. There's no cold spots or drafts or anything like that. And we've rectified some of this internal wall, this low bearing wall. We've cut the chimney breast off the other side, which is now no longer needed. We've cast a pad stone here for this steel, which picks up a little bit of roof load. We've done a trial hole underneath this wall just to see that it went down to the ground like it should and I think that's it that's the brickwork sorted now we are ready to put the joists on I can't wait the guys can't wait and I hope you can't wait either thanks for joining me on the big build it is great fun having you with me I'll see you all soon <laughs>